Hey guys, 420 scene here, back at it again with another video. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a super stony day. Let me know what you're talking on and where you watch the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grow and smoke videos, our VIP Discord community, or if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one grow help, totally check us out on Patreon. I'm gonna have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the flowering stage, and for me, it is by far the easiest stage. And I think if you do it right if you get everything dialed in and you just stay ahead of the curve it could be the easiest stage of growth for you guys as well but there are a few things that you need to pay attention to so that way your ladies they're not going to grow too slowly because of course that's going to affect your final yield so well, let's talk about some things that could slow your ladies down and what you can do to prevent it not getting enough nutrition obviously that's going to be the first one it would probably be one of the very first things i would look into well you know i, I mean it really depends on who you are but here's the thing though it's not not about the overall nutrition like it is but it's not it's about what nutrition like what nutrients work best for which stage of growth like for example if you don't have enough nitrogen during the veg stage well that's a problem the same as you don't have enough phosphorus during the flowering stage especially the flower building weeks that's also going to be a problem so it's good practice to learn and get a good understanding on what nutrients you're going to need i've mentioned this in videos before but i still have people asking me how do you know if they're getting enough nutrition and you're not starving them. Now, I did answer this question a lot. I think the first time I answered it was on a Q&A a long time ago, but what I do is when I get into the early part of flowering, I'll stop watering altogether and see how many days it's going to take until the leaves start to sit at a lower position. And then what I'm going to do is subtract the day. So that's going to be my watering schedule for the flowering stage. Like for me, for the sour D run, I stopped watering when I threw her into flowering. And after four days, she started to look a little bit sad, you know, so that's what I would do. I would subtract the day. So my watering schedule is going to once every three days and if you do it that way that's pretty much going to be the golden standard throughout the flowering stage schedule is not going to divert or change i've done this on a lot of my runs and i've never had an issue with starving it's literally them telling you how often they want to water so just listen to them another problem people have is dropping their lights way too close during the flowering stage so you ever walk into your garden after you drop your lights and all of a sudden like the leaf tips they're curling upward like this not downward upward it's really important that you know that because curving downward and upward are two different signs for two completely different things. But if you've ever noticed when you drop the light and it's curling upward, that's gonna be light stress all the way. You know, it's, I mean, it's really good to have intense lighting, but at the same time, if you drop your lights too low, you're gonna fuck it up. Now, I rock the ES300 from the Green Sunshine Company, and I keep mine around 24 inches during flowering and about 28 inches during the veg stage. And here's the thing though, if your lights are too close, it's gonna burn your ladies. And instead of them focusing on building flowers for you, they're gonna try every Everything they possibly can to fix your fuck ups by trying to utilize all their energy on recovering the affected leaves even though it's not going to recover them at all i mean it's just wasted time and energy so just make sure to pay attention to your light distance i can't stress that enough i feel like a lot of us we feel like oh yeah i'm going to drop it to 18 inches 22 inches i know some light companies what they're going to do is they're going to show you okay you should have it in the flowering stage 18 inches and the reason they do that is because with having more intense lighting specifications it's going to help their par reading a little bit more. So even if a light company says 18 inches, take that with a grain of salt. They're trying to make money off you. They're trying to make their lights seem more intense than they really are. Now, I'm not saying every company is like that, but at the end of the day, just pay more attention to what your ladies like. If you're doing 18 to 22 inches, fine. If you're going to do it that way, at the very least, pay attention to your leaves. If the top leaves, if they're starting to curl upward like that, that's them telling you, okay, a little bit too close, bump it up a little bit, try maybe like 20. 24 inches so try it that way you know you don't want to ignore anything that you think might not really be that big of an issue because it most likely will be an issue that needs some kind of attention you know what i'm saying so just kind of keep an open mind about that pay attention to what your ladies are asking for they're always going to ask you things it's just a matter of whether you're going to pick up on it or not also if you have bug issues you have real issues especially during flowering you know like veg is not really that big of a deal because you could foliar spray neem oil and a whole bunch of other their stuff some bugs are gonna be a bigger problem than others i mean they're all bad but like if you have spider mites or broad mites if you get those guys you're fucked there's nothing you can do like especially if you have spider mites like an infestation you see all that webbing on the flowers and stuff like it's a terrible sight you get the web your flowers get all webbed out you're beat if you have fungus gnats it's more of a common problem it's not as big of a problem believe it or not like it's a lot easier to 
deter fungus gnats than it is like the spider mites they've already done the damage when it comes to fungus gnats there's a lot of different ways you can get rid of them but whichever way you try like if you're trying to use something on them for a long time just make sure to switch it up every once in a while because i feel like they can get immune to certain deterrents like if you got microbe lift keep using it but if you start to notice that maybe the effectiveness isn't really doing too much after a certain amount of times passed it's probably because they might have gotten used to it that's what i've always felt start to change your tactics use ground cinnamon use rosemary believe it or not they hate rosemary as much as we love rosemary we love to use that as seasoning they absolutely cannot stand it so top dress some cinnamon top dress some rosemary they're gonna get out of there and that's gonna be the end of that another good way of getting rid of bugs and i was trying this out by accident but let's just say you're ready to top dress and you just start noticing oh man i got some bug issues on here like on my topsoil or whatnot sprinkle your dry amendments on your topsoil and leave it alone leave it alone for like a day or two don't massage it into your soil or anything just leave it sit there it's gonna dry them up i tried it that way no more bugs i'm not even playing i tried it just to see if it would work i'm like oh man this this feels like really dry in my hands let me see if it's gonna dry it out and they're not gonna go underneath because of all the micro lift that you put in there it's gonna kill the larva so they can't go under anyway so them gonna be bouncing bro you know now don't get me wrong i'm not saying micro lift is not effective it's very effective i'm just saying that i feel like if you use too much of something they can develop immunity towards something i've always kind of felt that way about bugs so that's why i gave you other options like the cinnamon the rosemary those are two other things that bugs absolutely hate and also make sure to get those reflective aphid sticky traps i'm gonna put the most effective sticky traps that i've used over the years on screen so you can check it out they sell them on amazon i think it's like maybe 10 or 15 dollars and you get five of them i mean they're really effective you can use it for your entire run they're super reflective it's like straight up yellow and orange they will not be able to help themselves like i remember one of the very first few runs i tried using it because just because my shop guy told me about it, he's like oh this is really effective i'm like all right it's only 10 bucks 15 bucks at my local hydro shop i'll try it out and i think i was using it for like a month and the whole thing was like covered i was also doing a basement run so there was like a lot of bugs and stuff but that's that's another story you know hey we all had to start somewhere i remember one month in the whole thing was completely covered with bugs the entire thing it's super effective so definitely check out those aphid sticky reflective traps they work like a dime like they work really good now as far as spider mites are concerned if you're trying to get rid of them just know they don't like air circulation so if you're using like an oscillating fan you know you should be perfectly fine spider mites they thrive in very moist but stagnant conditions very close to mold another way you can prepare yourself and set up your grow properly is to make sure that you have good drainage and of course this is something you would need to do when you're mixing your soil or when you're mixing your pre-mixed soil make sure there's enough drainage so that way you don't get root rot now different brands have different types of drainage like ocean for fox farm ocean forest has really good drainage happy frog has oak drainage i would probably add maybe like 10 percent if you're using happy frog light warrior has pretty good drainage i'd add maybe also 10 percent. i feel like the drainage of light warrior is close to happy frog if you're using pro mix hp that has good drainage if you're using like coast of maine stonington blend add like maybe 15 20 percent perlite um what's some other soil i've used black gold if you're using black gold maybe like 15 percent and you should be solid now with the pro mix the hp and the bx you can use both of them there's not really that much of a difference between the soils and both of them have really good drainage so especially the hp i think hp has a little bit better drainage than the bx so if you're using the pro mix bx just to stay on the safe side maybe like 15 percent perlite and you should be perfectly fine with that as far as my favorite soils that i've been using the last couple of years i would say pro mix hp that's what i've been using for the last two or three years <laughs> religiously and if my shop doesn't have pro mix then i'll just get like some ocean forest and maybe add a little bit of langbianite in there just so i have that potassium because ocean forest doesn't really have that much for potassium but other than that it's really good soil it's really important to have enough drainage so whichever soil you're going to be going with so that way you don't get root rot you get root rot then you get anaerobic bacteria and that's going to give you wilted leaves and it's just a complete nightmare trust me my skittles run i i really learned how important having good drainage really is all right root rot is probably on the same level as spider well spider mites is actually maybe just a little bit worse and then root rot would be like right here only because with root rot you can actually fix it spider mites you can only fix it if you're like in the veg stage like if you're in flowering and already webbed out then that's the number worse one worse thing 
that is having those spider mites. But root rot would be like right number two, right in there. So make sure you guys are using perlite if you feel like you're not getting that much good drainage. Hopefully those soils that I mentioned gave you a little bit more insight whether or not you should be using perlite or not. And the thing is, it's gonna create more air pockets for the water to travel through so you can drain properly. Now, see guys, here's the thing though. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about are things that you can do to prevent issues from arising. You know, it's all about the environment, making sure your roots are nice and healthy and getting good airflow, which is of course part of your environment. And a lot of the stuff that could happen to you is all preventable. It's just a matter of whether you're preparing yourself in the beginning of your run. And it's really important to set the tone in the beginning of your run. Make sure you have enough perlite. Make sure you're always paying attention to your light distance. Like even for my sour D run, because even though you're bending and you're topping, you're doing all your training, you're keeping them nice and stout, keep measuring. You never want to not know something. You always want to make sure that you're in control because when you're not in control, that's when shit happens. Now, another thing that's going to slow down your growth is trash genetics. I mean, what can I say? Just get better beans. <laughs> Remember how in the beginning of the video, I was talking about lacking nutrients. Now let's talk about where people really fuck up in and that's overfeeding. Now, if you have slightly burned tips, it's not really that big of a deal, but if you're really overfeeding, I mean, and you're getting some really bad tip burn, I'm talking about like a third of your leaves are already burned, then you gotta just chill out, okay? You gotta chill out with the feeding. Your ladies can only handle a certain amount of nutrition until it's considered to be overkill. And organic amendments, they're pretty forgiving. And at the most, you might get a little bit of nutrient burn. I know I got a little bit of newt burn on my sour D, but it's nothing to really get in a twist over. A lot of the over fertilization issues, they either come from like the PK boosters being used way too much. Like I've mentioned in prior videos before and using synthetic bottled nutrients. Now, if you're using bottled nutrients, I recommend with going half strength than what the company is re like recommending you give them. Try it out. Try doing half strength and see how you like it. Here's the thing about these companies. And I'm not saying every company is like that, but I'm going to say most people are like that. Like most companies are like that. They're not here to help you. Okay. <laughs> They're there to rob you. They want to make sure that you give the most amount of stuff. So you have to buy more of their shit. Don't fall for that trap. Just use half of what's recommended and you should be perfectly fine. So just make sure to not overfeed. And as far as like the directions go for like the organic amendments, you know, like the Gaia Green, the Down to Earth, I've used a lot of that stuff over the last maybe like four years. You can follow what the recommendation is on the labels for them because I found their stuff to be pretty accurate. Like I haven't had any issues following their directions. It's just when you're using like the synthetic bottle stuff, that stuff is so concentrated. So just be careful with that so you don't overfeed. Another thing that I feel like a lot of you guys should be doing is implementing vitamins into your grow. People don't talk about vitamins and I think that's a problem. Everyone talks about nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and we're talking about CalMag, the different macro and micronutrients that your ladies need, but don't forget that giving your ladies vitamins, it's gonna help with their immunity. It's just gonna help with their overall health. And the best way to give your ladies vitamins is to brew a compost tea with molasses, apple peels, kiwi peels, and potato peels. You can also use banana peels. They work great as well. It's how I created my banana tea. Now, don't ask me about orange or mango peels or any peels that I did not mention because if I've never used it, I'm not gonna mention it. So if I didn't mention it, I've never used this before, but your ladies are gonna be absolutely happy when you just give them the apple, kiwi, banana, and potato peels. Do not skimp out on the vitamins. It's not that bad. Also, you can put a little bit of kelp meal in your compost tea. So blackstrap molasses, make sure it's unsulfured. Put in some kelp meal so, you know, the roots can grab a hold of the vitamins and stuff like that. That's what I've had really good results with, especially the apple and kiwi peels. They absolutely love that stuff, man. Not for nothing, but I think the flowering stage is by far the easiest stage. You figure out what watering schedule they want to be in. And after that, I mean, it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Your ladies are always going to tell you, like I said in the beginning of the video, they're always going to tell you if they want something or need something. The question is whether you're going to be the one to pick up on it, but don't worry. Even if you don't pick up on it right away, that's what we're here for. You're not going to learn everything in one run or even a few runs. It took me a long time to finally figure this horticulture thing out. And that's why I'm here. And I do also offer one-on-one -on -one help throughout your grow on Patreon. So if that's something you're interested in or need help with, totally check us out in there. It might change your entire perspective. A lot of beginners, they think about the wrong things with horticulture. And I can make that statement because even when I was a beginner, I was thinking about the 
absolute wrong things. And it's not that there's bad information out there. I mean, there is a percentage of bad information, but I feel like a lot of the information that's out there is pretty good. It's just, I feel like people are not utilizing that information in the proper way. So they think it's bad information, if that makes sense. Now that's not to say that there isn't bad information. See, some people think my information is bad, but they're probably not utilizing my information properly. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. If there's anything I might've left out, totally drop it in the comment section below. Before we close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. To everyone else, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And most importantly, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Also, leave comments in the comment section. Believe it or not, the comments really help the channel out because it provides interaction and I think it helps the algorithm in some way. So, but anyway, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And as always, stay safe. Peace.